By 1991, Dennis Gonzalves and his Cornell and University of Hawaii teams were successful in developing a genetically engineered line that showed resistance to the diseases in the greenhouse at Cornell. Next, they took it to the field and showed that the line could stand up to the virus in a small field trial on Oahu. The success of the line in this field trial resulted in the development of two virus-resistant cultivars, orange-fleshed sunup and the yellow-fleshed rainbow papaya. In 1995, the team carried out a large-scale field trial at Ground Zero in the midst of the raging epidemic in Puna on the Big Island of Hawaii. You can see the difference in this aerial photo, the difference between the genetically engineered papaya at the center of the field and the susceptibility of the non-genetically engineered papaya around the edge. Here's the on-the-ground view. The genetically engineered papaya was clearly resistant to the devastation of the virus. Dennis and his team had developed a robust new variety that could save the industry. Next, they turned to get all of the necessary regulatory approvals needed to commercialize the crop. This field trial was extraordinary for a couple of reasons. The first, it was conducted under real-world epidemic conditions. The epidemic was raging and the disease pressure was severe. Any new papaya that could stand up to these conditions would be a boon for growers. Secondly, the field trial was happening in Puna, where the farmers who were meant to benefit from the technology could observe the potential of this new resistant technology firsthand. Since they saw the resilience of the genetically engineered papaya in the field, they were eager to adopt the technology when it first became available. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, APHIS, deregulated the transgenic papaya in November 1996, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency deregulated it in August of 1997. The consultation process with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration was completed in September 1997. Licenses to commercialize the transgenic papaya were obtained by the Papaya Administrative Committee, the growers' organization in Hawaii, by April of 1998. On May 1st, the genetically engineered papaya made its debut six years after the virus was discovered in Kipuna. Just three years later, the papaya industry of Hawaii was on a healthy rebound and production had already doubled since the crippling effects of the virus on the industry. A decade later, the resistance remained strong and upwards of 80% of the papaya produced in Hawaii was genetically engineered for virus resistance. The resistant papaya had the added benefit of facilitating the production of non-GMO papaya preferred by some markets, such as the Japanese. By lowering the total amount of virus on the islands, growers could once more manage to grow non-genetically engineered papaya. The papaya industry of Hawaii had been saved with science.